Before the sun rises is the time of least distraction. Before the sun rises where you can build intimacy and fluency with what you want to stand for in your day. Before the sun rises, the luxury and tranquility of the early morning hours, you can do that deep inner work that will allow you to go out in the world and, and play at your best. We live in a world where a lot of people are busy being busy, but what's the point of being busy around climbing the wrong Mount Everests? And so clarity is one of the DNAs of mastery. But if you look at the greatest billionaires, if you look at the greatest producers on the planet, these people have one thing in common. They are ridiculously curious. And no matter how much money they make and no matter how much impact they have, they maintain a white belt mentality. One of the keys to epic performance is a relentless commitment to daily growth. As you begin your day, so you handcraft the rest of your day. And if you have consistently great days, you're gonna have consistently great weeks, quarters, year, and a lifetime. We live in a world that suggests the doorway to success it swings outward. If you build the business, if you get the jet, if you get the money, if you get the cars, if you get the beautiful spouse, then you're going to be happy. What I believe, and there's a model in the 5AM Club that I think is a very disruptive model, but it's a transformational model. And it's called the Four Interior Empires. And it's not just mindset, it's mindset, heart set, health set, and soul set. But I worked on those Four Interior Empires when I was a very unhappy litigation lawyer. Like, I'd made money, I was successful, I had two law degrees, and yet I'd wake up every morning, Tom, and I'd go into the bathroom mirror and I'd look at myself and I was a completely empty person. And nothing is more expensive than losing your joy and your peace of mind. And so what I did was I started working on myself. You know, I worked on my mindset and I read all the books and I went to the courses, but that's only your psychology. And I think that's one of the missing links in our field, which is everyone's talking about mindset. But mindset is just your belief system. It's just your psychology. It's, it's very important, but that's 25% of the personal mastery equation. I believe the second piece is your heart set. And I worked on that purifying your heart. That's your emotionality, not just your psychology. You're never going to make history dominate your domain and handcraft a world-class life if you've got a great psychology, but you're carrying the pain and sadness, disappointment and trauma of the past. So I worked on my heart set, your health set. Don't die. If you want to change the world, like dead people don't change the world. What have you done today to be different? What have you done to step outside the conventions that you set for yourself? The conventions and the rules set by your past. Today, you have the power to move on. Today, you have the power to move away from your past and move towards a successful future. This is your decision, your call to make in your future. This is how your life can gain its own direction. And this is where your life can be so much more, so much better. You can make it better. You have always had the potential to take one more step, the potential to take the risks others are too scared to take because you are more and you are stronger and you have the determination and the courage to be so much more. Know how to be someone better, to look for something better, to become someone with the purpose, to constantly look for change, to always look for somewhere to improve, for somewhere to be better because this is where you begin. You own your success, so let it take control. Take control of your life and take control of your power. This is where the power is in your control. Get after it. You go out in the world every single morning. People might ridicule you because every genius is ridiculed before they're revered. People might throw stones at you, but you use them to build monuments of mastery. People might not understand you, because any disruptor is gonna be misunderstood. And even if you're an army of one, a Galileo or a Steve Jobs or a Phil Knight, you continue at all costs. It all starts with who you are because you'll never rise any higher than what's going on within you. What terrifies you most go directly there because discomfort is simply 
growth in wolf's clothing, to lead and to become a great hero or an everyday hero. The doorway is through embracing our suffering and doing difficult things. I think pleasure has been promoted too much in our society. Like no great titan of industry, no legendary cellist, no great athlete. You know, the great ones all understand that suffering is the price of greatness. So how do we become braver? You, you, you do the difficult things that you don't feel like doing, but you know have the payoff. You know, be crazy. The great leaders are insane. And I say that they're insane to the majority. The great ones are all misfits and they're all weird. I mean, the very nature of being a disruptor and a leader means you're not a follower. And if you're not a follower, then you're not buying the Kool-Aid that society sells you. If you're not a follower, you're not like this all the time looking for likes. If, if, if you're not a follower, you dress the way you want to dress. If people criticize you, yeah, they criticize all the great ones. Critics are n nothing more than dreamers who got scared and never got off their chairs and got back in the game. So you've got to be willing to be, to 5 a.m. Weird, who does that? Why not sleep? Leaders have to be willing not to be followers. Stop blaming others. Stop blaming people for the reasons you find yourself in now. Stop blaming your situation. Stop blaming your parents. Stop blaming the government. Stop blaming your genetic. Stop blaming your finances. Stop blaming your past. Claw yourself back into the light. Stop blaming everybody else. The only person you can truly blame is you because you are the only person who can get yourself out of it. Live life a victor, not a victim. You might even be right. You might be poor because of your parents or broken because of your relationship you were in. But what does blaming people or society do for you? It will keep you in the same hole and all you're doing is digging the hole even more. It's because your situation, where you, right now, hasn't changed. In order to go forward and to get out of the hole is growth. Instead of bringing other people down to your level, build yourself up to them. Claw yourself out of that hole and you will get to see the sun once again. Massive success is how you prove people wrong and prove yourself right. The only way you get upstream is to swim against the current. You're permanently ruining your future. You're halting your progress. Life is made not to be easy. Not one's life is ever easy. How did you ever think you were ever going to make any progress? You can make this your time. You can take control of the life you want to live. Have the authority to know what you need to change. To know how to change and then to take action. Have discipline for yourself into progress. Switch your routine. Make your life hard. Difficult situations force you to make improvements, force you to learn, to educate yourself. Prove this to yourself. Make others jealous. Make yourself jealous. Like you're gonna only be so pretty, you're only gonna be so smart. Like you, like there's there's things that are gonna be natural, and there's things that you can actually control. I do believe, and I don't know if I'm right or wrong. I don't, but I do believe that work ethic is a taught behavior. It's something you do have more control over. I feel like there's a shift that can make people work harder. The big one that I push is you're gonna die. Like, like if you're complaining, like to me, life is broken down into complaining and not. So if you're not complaining, well then I have no, I have no advice for you. I'm, I'm pumped, like you did it. We're beating ourselves up. Like everybody sucks at something, right? Like we all have shortcomings and we all have strengths. And for me, it's like, why don't we just audit that? Like why don't we just look at it that way and be like, all right, well I'm good at this, but I'm not good at that. Like. And then, and, then, and then I only focus what I'm good at, right? Like, 
I don't dwell that I can't fix shit around the house. I call somebody to fix it. Don't lose yourself on the way to the top. There'll never be a better you than you.